Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. As the title suggests, this is going to be a bit of an update. Those of you who follow my channel will know that I haven't released a video in a couple of days and there are a few reasons for that. The main reason being that I filmed putting my X2 back together, firing it up for the first time and getting it ready to go out for a ride. Unfortunately, I formatted my SD card before I had transferred that footage to my computer and so that footage is now gone. I've also been working on a detailed squish band video that I had promised and it's turning out to be quite difficult. Partly due to the way my brain works, I'm kind of scatterbrained and partly due to the complexity of the video. Once you start getting into details, everything ties into another thing and I'm trying to put it together in a way that it will actually make sense and not just add to the confusion. BJ and I are hoping to get out tomorrow. Today is Saturday, November 21st, and we're planning on going out for our last ride of the season tomorrow, which is Sunday, November 22nd. So there are a couple of problems with that. One, the lake might actually be frozen around the edges. So that would make it a little bit tricky to get in and out. It would also make it dangerous because if we try to swim to shore, uh, yeah, obviously it's going to be tricky to get up onto the ice. But we're going to give it a go. BJ does need to get some more equipment before that happens. He's going to need to get some booties and probably gloves. So it might not happen at all. Either way, I'm going to try to get out and do some testing, even if it is just with the X2 on the back of the truck. I would really like to get out and actually give this thing one run before I tear it apart for the season. So as of now, the plan is to get out tomorrow, give it one decent break-in ride, and then bring it home and tear it completely apart, start doing some body work, and start getting into the engine and doing some more modifications. As far as the engine goes, I do have some exciting news coming. Uh, you guys will have to wait to see what that is, but uh, I'm hoping to get another X2 hull or maybe something else, but uh, there's another engine in the works, and uh, I'm not going to say any more about it right now, but it's going to be very, very exciting, something that I've wanted for quite some time, and uh, yeah, it's finally come together. Before I go out tomorrow, I want to do a few modifications to my cooling system. I know that I haven't gone over it in detail, so maybe I'll do that a little bit right now. But basically, I'm worried that the water is going to be so cold that it's not going to allow my engine to warm up. And that could be a problem because, as I mentioned in a previous video, I could end up with what they call cold seizure. So as your engine warms up, all the pieces are supposed to warm up together close to at the same rate. So your cylinder warms up and it expands and the piston warms up and it expands. Everything inside of the engine kind of warms up at the same rate. Of course, that's a gross generalization, but that's the way that we hope it works. So the problem that I could run into is that I have very cold water running in through my engine because you're pulling cold water out of the lake. The lake is almost frozen. So we'll be pulling cold water out of the lake and pumping it through my engine, which is trying to go through its break-in stage. As most of you probably already know, I just had my cylinders bored out. I installed new pistons and rings, so I'm going to want to run my engine through a gentle break-in period. This could be a bit of an issue if the cylinder doesn't expand due to excessive cooling water going through it. And this is a very real concern because the pistons are definitely going to expand because they're exposed directly to the combustion of the engine. So the pistons expanding and the cylinder not expanding would mean that I used up what little clearance that I have. I checked the clearance before I put the engine together and there is four thousandths clearance, but the reality of the situation is when you check clearance on a piston, you're actually pushing the piston over to one side. So it's touching one cylinder wall and you're checking the clearance on one side of the piston. So the reality of the situation is you only really have half of that much clearance all around the piston. So if you have four thousandths clearance when you're checking it, 
the reality of the situation is that you really have 2000s clearance all the way around the piston. So that is very little clearance. 2000s clearance is not very much. And if the piston happens to expand 2000s, then I have direct contact between my cylinder wall and my piston. That's gonna cause things to heat up really quickly and it's not going to be ideal for break-in or anything else. As most of you car people probably know, an automotive engine uses a thermostat to carefully regulate the flow of coolant through the engine so that they can regulate the temperature of the engine. Typically, the thermostat is completely closed when the engine is cold. You start the engine up, it has coolant in the engine, but it's not circulating. Once the engine warms up to operation temperature, the coolant warms up, the thermostat opens up, and the coolant starts to circulate through the engine and through the radiator. With most watercraft engines, the way that they try to control the temperature of the engine is by regulating flow through the engine, but it is not variable in any way, and it does not shut off at any point. I have a 650 engine here, and I will very quickly explain how they cool and how the restriction is done. On this particular engine, as well as many other watercraft engines, the cooling water enters the cooling system through a fitting in the exhaust manifold, it then travels through cooling jackets in the exhaust manifold, through jackets around the exhaust ports, in through cooling jackets around the cylinders, cooling the cylinders, and then into the water jackets in the cylinder head before exiting the cylinder head through another fitting. Once the water exits the fitting in the top of the cylinder head, it is sometimes spit out through the side of the hull in a telltale as an indication that water is flowing through your engine. Other times it is directed through the exhaust system to either help quiet the exhaust system or further cool the exhaust system. So how do they go about trying to regulate the flow of cooling water through a watercraft engine? It's actually quite simple. Unfortunately, I don't have an exhaust gasket here to show you guys. But as we've already been over, the cooling water enters the cooling system through the water jackets around the exhaust system and then travels through the rest of the engine. So what they do in order to restrict the flow of water or control the flow of water is simply put small holes in the exhaust gasket. So the exhaust gasket covers most of the water jacket and they just put small holes in there that restrict the flow. So I'm just out in my garage editing this video and I thought I would add a interesting tidbit of information. A couple of clips back I mentioned that a lot of the time they feed water in through the exhaust manifold and they actually do this for a couple of reasons. One reason may seem fairly obvious but there is one that a lot of people probably don't think about. The obvious reason is that your exhaust manifold runs really hot and so pumping cool water into it is a good idea. Nice fresh cool water, it's the first place that it goes so you get lots of cooling at your exhaust manifold. This next reason is a lot less obvious and may seem unbelievable but it is what they call shock cooling. Shock cooling is when you take a piece of metal and cool it off extremely rapidly. It can actually cause permanent distortion of the metal so it won't return to its regular shape even after it's returned to normal temperatures. The way that this applies to an engine is that if you cool your engine off really quickly it can actually cause warpage of the cylinder head or of the cylinder itself that won't return to normal shape. Or it can just cause the cylinder to shrink so rapidly that it squeezes the piston and causes a seizure or just scuffs the piston. So how do they deal with the problem of shock cooling in a watercraft? Well, they have an extremely robust exhaust manifold. If you've ever seen the exhaust manifold from a watercraft, it looks like nothing else. They use extremely thick aluminum, and that isn't just to support the weight of the exhaust system. That is so that it resists warping when you cool it really quickly. The water that they use to cool the exhaust system has now warmed up and now you can pump it through your engine without worrying about shock cooling the rest of the engine. And now I'm now going to go over the cooling system on my X2 and talk about some of the modifications that I made to it to try to gain some control over the water flow. 
Most of the modifications that I did were to actually separate the cooling through the exhaust and the engine. We only touched on it a little bit in my explanation, but normally the cooling system for the engine also feeds water into the exhaust, both for cooling and for quieting the exhaust system down. All right, I'm going to explain to you guys how I have my cooling system separated. I have one feed that only deals with the exhaust system and another feed that only feeds the engine. So if we take a walk around to the other side, we can see there is a line in here. This line is what feeds the exhaust system. It only feeds the exhaust system and has nothing to do with cooling the engine. And then I have this line down here, which goes underneath the bed plate and into the bottom of the exhaust manifold here. And this one only cools the engine. It goes in the bottom of the exhaust manifold, as we have already discussed. It goes through the water jackets in the exhaust manifold, in through my block, up through my head, out of the head, and directly out through this front telltale. The reason why I separated the engine cooling and the exhaust cooling is because I wanted to be able to control the amount of water flow through the exhaust. If you have too much water flow through the exhaust, it can cause a restriction and decrease performance. Also, if you are running the exhaust too cool, it can also decrease performance, so I wanted to be able to control the amount of water flow through my exhaust. So right now, this line only feeds the exhaust so that if I change the amount of water flowing through the exhaust system, I wasn't affecting how much water would flow through the engine or the engine cooling. The plan all along was to be able to control the temperature to my engine, but I ended up using both of the valves that I have to control the flow through my exhaust. So I have cooling water comes into the exhaust through here, it goes through the water jackets in my exhaust and some also feeds in through a little hole directly into the exhaust system. I just started to go on quite the rant about my exhaust cooling system. I'm going to have to edit most of that out because it started to get a little bit geeky. But uh, basically the reason why I was explaining it was two things. I think that it's cool and also because I'm going to try to use a similar system in a very simplified way to control the flow through the engine. So, as I explained earlier, we have the cooling water that comes out of the top of the head and it goes directly out through the telltale. What I'm going to do is use a valve as a restriction in the outlet so that I can slow down how fast the water is going through my engine. Ideally, I would have a thermometer or some sort of temperature gauge in my engine that I could actually see while I was riding and then I would know what the temperature was and I could make adjustments. Unfortunately, that's probably not gonna happen, so I'm just going to have to restrict the water flow a little bit and then as I'm in the water, I'm going to have to put my hand here and see if the water is actually hot coming out of the telltale. I know that was an awful lot of words to explain something that's fairly simple. I could have just said, hey guys, I'm going to put a control valve in the outlet to slow down the water flow and most everybody would have been happy with that. But that's not the way that I do things. I overthink things and I go into great detail and sometimes it works out for me and sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, I've got a couple other projects I'm working on. I'm actually redesigning or coming up with another surf brace, so I'm working on that now. I also got more parts to make some more camera rigs. So I got some more carbon fiber tubes and pieces, and yeah, I'm starting to work on building another one of those. If you guys want to see a video with me building a camera rig, then uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. I'm not gonna bother if nobody wants to see it, but if somebody wants to see it, then maybe I'll film it. Also, I could do a video about building the other surf brace if people wanna see that. But again, if it's not something you guys are interested in, then I'm not gonna go through the trouble of filming it. As I said at the start of this video, I do have some exciting engine news to come, and that is not it. But uh, yeah, 
Hopefully we get to get out tomorrow and ride. It's gonna After shooting that last clip, I realized two things. One is that I keep messing my hair up by putting my hood on and then taking it off. It's a little bit chilly in here and yeah, every time I stop recording, I put my hood on and then I take my hood off and start recording and my hair is all messy. The other thing that I realized is that I should probably just go ahead and change my cooling system so that I can show you guys so that you know what I'm riding with tomorrow. The cooling line that comes out of the exhaust now goes straight out through the uh, telltale. It also splits off and goes into the stinger and water box. The only thing that's changed about this is that it does not tee off to the handlebars anymore. The other change that I made to my lines should be fairly obvious. I now have all of the cooling water coming out of my engine going through this valve and up through my handlebars. The only telltale that I have now will be water shooting out of the end of my grips, so I will be able to monitor the water going through my engine very easily. I now have this valve on here. I'm going to start by running it in the complete wide open position because this is fairly small. This is going to restrict the flow even with it being completely open. So I'm going to run it at the start in the complete open position. If it turns out that my engine is still running cool, I will be able to turn this valve down and restrict the flow of water through the cooling system. I will then have to very carefully monitor the temperature and flow of water coming out through my grips because that is the only way I have of knowing what the temperature of my engine is. If I start seeing steam coming out of here instead of water, that's a very bad sign. Of course, I would love to be able to install a temperature gauge, but I don't really have time for that, and I don't know if I have a gauge. I still have to edit this video, install my surf brace, make sure that I don't have any leaks or that any hoses are gonna fall off, make sure that I have all my camera gear ready for tomorrow, and uh, yeah, do a whole lot more prep work. With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.